Yeah, John, uh, Coach Engelstead said they were a bit surprised by Oscar's mid-range jumper, but I remember Coach O at Media Day said he has a mid-range jumper. There's more to his game than low post. And you guys are going to let Oscar be Oscar, whatever that means. If, if that's Well, we've been, I've been on him. I, I told you all that he can shoot the ball. He's one of our best 15, 17-foot shooters. The other day we did the uh, five-minute shooting drill that we did, and in five minutes he, had, he made 87 shots. 87. I think the most was by um, um, Kyle Wilshire, I think. He might have made 89 one time. Kid made 87. So then I'm telling the team, how can he shoot an air ball? Like it's in his mind, shoot the ball. So we put in some stuff for him to shoot jumpers, which is what we did. So, you know, it's an easier way to get him a shot. Like we know that this is for him. But, you know, he made baskets, didn't get quite as many rebounds. Keon got him in the first half. I loved it. You know, that's how he's got to play or people will move by him. And I told him, just go play. Look, he had energy. Now, I did send him to go trap to make him and Bryce more motor, play with motor. And then they ran hard enough where they're ahead of the game. So um, they, they're a team that takes away the three-point shot. Well, by taking away the three, Oscar had baskets. We had a bunch of layups. But they did what they did. They don't give you threes. And then the 10, we, had, we, we passed up on two or three. The guys were open, the guys that we want to shoot it, shoot the ball. And then they drive in and, you know, nothing, it's not something good that happens. I'd rather you shoot it or drive it to pass it to somebody else. So they played well, though. I thought St. Mary's played well. Cal, how much closer was what Ty Ty did tonight to how you want him to play? So he had four turnovers, though. And again, here, here's what I'm saying to the team. You know, again, I, I say stuff, I tell the truth. Sometimes that aggravates people. Yeah, you, it's negative. I'm telling the truth. We run, and when we throw it ahead, if they ran back, we did our job because we made them run. And then we reverse the ball out and we play basketball. And after they've run that way about seven straight times, you throw it ahead and the guy gets a layup. So today we threw it ahead and they ran for their lives back. And we drove in on there. There's nothing there. They're there. We've done our job. We've made them sprint, swing that ball out and play. So that happened. He had four turnovers. Probably two of them were on that. I got on him because the, the lobby threw it. You, you guys, he could have thrown it, hit the top of the backboard, and Damian would go get it. And he, he threw it low. Why would you throw it low? So, but I, he's, he's getting better. He'll be fine. John, on Friday you asked for an R counter for Oscars rebounds, and they, they got the counter in the corner. I don't know if you saw it or not. I didn't know. Um, but I said, where are the rebound things? And they put down the threes and they put up that. I love it. It's you know, so he knew how many more he had to get. But if he was one or two away, I'd have left him in for another minute, let him get two rebounds, because that's not being selfish. Oh, he needs two more points. Sit down. It's not about points. That's ego stuff. Rebounds are hard to get, and that's not being selfish. The other one is... You want to get 10 assists a game, you're my newest hero. Why don't you get 12? So, you know, but again, you know, we had 12 assists or, or 15 assists. Um, but I'm telling you, they make you shoot layups and make you bounce the ball to score. It's how they play. How hard is it to be consistent to Oscar and rebound, and how difficult is that? Well, you know they were throwing bodies at him. Like, I got mad on the, on the screen. Because if you hit him and you're running fast, what, do you, what, are you gonna, what do you think is going to happen? He didn't have to move. He just goes like this, and you hit 255, 7% body fat. You are going to spin and look like you got smashed. That is not a foul. He's too, it's his advantage. 
being 255 pounds. Other guys' advantage is they're seven foot tall. That ain't him. Don't take away his advantage. The same thing when he rebounds like this, and the guy is backing under him to try to block him out, and he jumps straight up and does this. Believe me, I will go nuts if that's called an over in the back because they're underneath him pushing. He sets a screen. Now, if he obviously moves, like it's a sliding move, but if he, he leans like everyone in the country and he leans on a screen, you're going to knock the guy down because of how big he is. But that's his advantage. Don't take away his advantage. Let him be who he is. Uh, Jack Grossman, ESPN Louisville. Coach, uh, Severe, uh, eight assists, just one turnover tonight. What's been different and better about his de decision-making the last couple games? He's not losing his mind. Now, believe me, after the game, he looked at me and said, I had one turnover. So he knows it's important to me. So who is it going to be important to? Him. We still have some guys that I'm telling them exactly what I want them to do and how to play. And they fight it a little bit, and it, it just hurts them, hurts us. He is totally bought into what I'm saying. Totally bought in. Like that three he took with the guy on him. I said, why would you do that? Now, if the ball went in and out to you, shoot the three every single time. The guy's on you. Go buy him. Get us something. You don't shoot that ball. It's a bank miss. But, you know, I like the fact that I'm able to get on our best players. That means I can coach everybody on this team. Cal, you've used the expression in the past, you told on yourself when a player does something exceptional. Oscar's going out and doing it like every night. Um, is he the kind of guy that can keep this pace up? Uh, you know, telling he on will, himself? He will try. He will try. Um, you know, my guess is that there's going to be teams that are going to put two guys on him. Would you say that? So what does the other guy have to do? And if he's not rebounding, Keon rebounded today. Damian didn't. So I played Keon more. Yeah, but you don't understand all the other parts of the game. I know the one part this team's going to need. That position is going to have to rebound because they're going to put two guys on him, which means you're going to be free to go get balls, both defensively and maybe even offensively. But you got to go. And so, you know, we've been working on it. I was so proud of Keon today. Like, you know, second half he didn't rebound as much, but Oscar got every one. But what he did was he played with an energy. You know, he didn't start the game one-handed catch. and do, No, he played. This, this, this is a, a sense of urgency every time you play. And I just told him, we, we need to play like we started the second half. Every time we step on the court, whatever you're doing, you get yourself in that frame of mind. And like I said, when I put those other guys in and they miss a shot, they take a bad shot, they give up a basket of three, I took them all out. I said, you all are together in this. And if one guy's breaking you down, say something to him. Tell him, you're giving up baskets. He's going to take us all out. And so, you know, like I said, we, we've got a lot to work on. We've got a lot to do. Um, you know, playing... The guys about Oscar, I played more. Um, part of that was I didn't think Damian was playing the way he had played the, the last game. Um, and, and let me just say one other thing, that the greatest thing is they're coaching each other. They're holding each other accountable. At halftime, one of the players looked right at the other guy and said, we need you. Where's your energy? Where's your spirit? And you know what I said? When someone tells the truth, don't be mad. Well, I think that's negative. When someone tells the truth, and that the rest of you should be saying facts. He didn't say it yelling, cussing. He just told you. And now it's facts. Come on. We need you. That's when this team begins to be empowered. I had severe coaching the guards in pick and roll defense. He coached them. You don't need to be in this drill. They all need to drill. Show him what you're doing. He showed him, and then he coached him. And then he started coaching the bigs. I said, coach the whole team. That's fine for me. I don't care. But we're just trying to grow, and, 
you know, but this is a team that needs everybody to play well. Kyle, you said the other day that Jacob was getting an MRI. Was did anything come back that that's a long term issue, or what do you expect? I, I hope not, but it's it, there was no, um, you know, damage, damage. You know, he's got a bruised shoulder, and uh, we'll see. And, and Lance has the um, um, ankle. So whether he'll play in two days, I, de I don't know. Um, and, and we're playing Ohio. I haven't watched any tape on them. They're 4-0. They're um, they shoot 33s a game and make 12. If they make 12 against us, we'll lose. So now we got to spend a day absolutely saying, OK, how are we going to guard this stuff? They got. Five guys that all can play. What I did like today, did you see Oscar go out and guard guards? The only problem is when they try to drive, what's he do? He's trying to reach and don't. Just stay in front of the guy. And he's got feet that he can do that. So, But it, it, the Ohio game is going to be a hard one for us. Hard game. John, any update on CJ and his surgery? And what steps do you take on purpose to keep him involved? Because, I mean, rehab can be pretty lonely. Yeah, he um, – um, I talked to him before the surgery today. And um, he was in a good frame of mind. And, um, you know, we need him – he can't travel for a while. But I want him to be around the team because he needs the guys. He, he's – I'm telling you, folks, he came up to me when I found out what it was – and, and I hugged him, and he said, I'm sorry. You're sorry? Are you crazy? And he said, Coach, I love these guys. I really wanted to play with this group. And that's the kind of kid he is. I mean, and we, we, him, I'm just telling you, you saw how he shoots. You put one more guy out there that can make shots. He also had a six-to-one assist to turnover ratio. He didn't turn it over. He guards. Like, he will guard and keep people in front and come up with balls. We it's, – it's a, it's a bad blow for us and for him, too. Coach, I don't know if you're aware that uh, the Kentucky women's team played Indiana on Sunday with uh, first-year head coach Mike Woodson. Has there been any discussion? Say what? Uh, has there been any discussion with um, uh, Mike Woodson, the new head coach up there, about trying to bring that series back in some way, shape, or form in the future? Mike and I are good friends, and, you know, um, the, we've talked about stuff. So, but there's no, nothing imminent that I could talk to you about. So we, uh, I think we got to do, still got to do, we got to go to Notre Dame. I think we got to do a Michigan thing. You still got the Big 12. You still got Louisville every year. You got the two tournaments that everyone wants in that we're in. That's everybody wants those tournaments. If we, the greatest thing about those two neutral games is the four teams that are in are lucky because the minute anybody would drop out, there'd be 50 teams calling and begging to be in those tournaments. So, you know, got through the Georgia Tech thing, but yeah, it's, uh, Mike's a good guy. I, from what I understand, they're doing well, too, playing good basketball. He's a hell – let me tell you, hell of a coach. And he's a great guy. I could tell you stories about what makes him a great guy. Um, but he's, he's doing great.